Have you ever felt like you don't belong, like your friends and colleagues are going to find out that you're a fraud and that you really don't deserve your job and accomplishments? Do you constantly belittle yourself and have very little confidence in your own abilities? If so, you're among the estimated 70% of those who suffer from something called imposter syndrome. It affects all kinds of people from all parts of life. Even though I'll be addressing this from the viewpoint of a developer, this video is relevant for any profession. Really quick, before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year, plus $25 in free credits to use for other services they offer if you use the link in the description below. It's super easy to use. After I signed up, I was able to provision a new server in less than 30 seconds. They also have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers. So try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. Click the link in the description below and use the code STACKER to get your $25 in credit. Well, first off, I want to say that I'm not a doctor of any sort. So if you are suffering from any serious illness, whether physical or emotional, please consult a professional. The contents of this video are my personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions. So what is imposter syndrome? Well, it's the idea that you've only succeeded due to luck and not because of your talent or qualifications. It's the inability to believe that your success is deserved as a result of your efforts and skills. That's the dictionary definition. Now, according to Dr. Valerie Young, there are five subgroups or types of imposter syndrome. The first is the perfectionist. A perfectionist sets very high expectations for themselves. And even if they meet most of their expectations, if they miss a little bit, they still feel like a failure. This group can also be control freaks. They feel like if they want something done right, they have to do it themselves. Have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? Do you have difficulty delegating? And when you do delegate, do you feel disappointed in the results or try to find fault in them? When you don't get something 100% right, do you feel like a failure and let it affect you for days? The next type are experts. They feel like their confidence is based on what and how much they know. They need to know everything about a subject before they start on a project. Do you skip over job postings because you don't meet every criteria in the posting? Are you hesitant to ask questions at school or to speak up at work because you feel like you're going to look stupid? The next type is the natural genius. When the natural genius doesn't pick up on something easily, they feel like they're not good enough and they may even become ashamed. They're used to new skills coming very easily and doing things right the first time. When they have to put in more effort than they're used to, they just don't feel like they're good enough. Are you used to excelling with very little effort? Were you or are you a straight A's student? Do you dislike the idea of a mentor because you feel like you don't need the help? Do you avoid challenging yourself with things that you're not great at? The next one is the soloist. Soloists feel like they have to accomplish tasks on their own. And if they need help, they feel like they are a failure or a fraud. Now, independence is one thing, but they avoid assistance so that they can prove their worth. Do you often say, I don't need anyone's help? The last group is the superman or superwoman. They push themselves to work harder than everyone else around them to prove that they are not imposters. This overload of work is not only harmful to their mental health, but also to their relationships and their work-life balance. Do you stay at work later than the rest of your team, even if you have completed all of your necessary tasks? Do you feel stressed and unable to unwind when you're not at work? Have hobbies been pushed aside in place of working more? Do you feel like you have to work harder and longer than others to prove your worth? So why do people experience imposter syndrome? Well, there are many factors to consider. It could be due to personality traits or low self-esteem. It could be due to the way we are raised. It could be our environment, our social upbringing, our culture or ethnicity. But basically, it boils down to the feeling that you don't fit in for whatever reason. 
Now in software development specifically, there are so many things to learn and so many paths that you can choose. And this can be very overwhelming. Programming languages and libraries are evolving almost daily. It's easy to fall behind if you don't keep up with them, and you may feel like you just don't know enough. Or you may go on that completely absurd whiteboard interview where you're given a piece of paper to scribble down your answer to some absurd question that you're never going to come across in real life. So you may feel like you're not smart enough to become a programmer or whatever profession you're pursuing. You may feel like you don't belong or like you don't fit in because you don't look like everybody else. It's easy to develop an unrealistic expectation of what you think success is. When we see success stories and executives who have accomplished so much, it's easy at times for us to develop a warped sense of success. We may think that we have to be on their level to be truly successful. So how can we deal with imposter syndrome? Let's look at a few different ways that we could do this. Acknowledgement. The first step to overcoming imposter syndrome is to acknowledge that there is an issue. Now reflect. Look back on what you have accomplished so far. You started out knowing nothing, and now look at the progress that you've made. Now if you continue to put forth the effort, you're going to continue to expand your capabilities. Remember that you are smart. If you feel like you're not smart enough, remember that anything can be learned. It's all about ambition and determination. You don't have to be the stereotypical nerd to be a programmer. You can do it. In programming specifically, some people believe that you have to have a computer science degree to be really called a programmer. To me, it doesn't matter what paper you have with your name on it. All that matters is what you're capable of doing. I don't have a computer science degree, and it hasn't stopped me from accomplishing my goals. Now, I'm not saying that you should not go to school if that's what you want to do. I personally didn't go, and I don't regret it. The next thing that you can work on is celebrate wins. So when you make an achievement, celebrate it, own it. Now, not in a bragging way, but just acknowledge it. Give yourself the credit that you deserve. Now, next, accept mistakes. Learn to accept your mistakes and don't dwell on them. They are a natural part of life. Understand that everybody makes mistakes. And actually, the more mistakes that you make, the more you're going to learn. Now, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Step outside of your comfort zone and try something new. Maybe that project that you put on the side because you thought it was too difficult. You're going to learn more from these experiences. Another thing that you can do is avoid external validation. You shouldn't have to rely on someone else's validation to make you feel good about yourself. Don't seek acceptance. And next, learn to accept constructive criticism. Don't take things personally. Try to see how you can apply the advice to yourself. You're going to become a better person. Now, constructive criticism is one thing, but don't let others put you down. Now, if someone makes you feel unworthy or not good enough for whatever reason, these are people that you should avoid. There are a lot of ignorant people out there. Don't let them get to you. It doesn't matter what you look like, what race you are, what sex you are, what language you speak. We're all humans and deserve to be treated with respect. Another thing is stop comparing. Understand that everyone struggles with something. We need to stop comparing ourselves with others. Everyone is at a different point in their journey. If you're just starting out, you can't compare yourself with someone who's been working for years. At some point, they were where you are now. This is something that I've struggled with, especially on YouTube. I see so many great programming channels, and it's hard not to compare yourself with others. Now, it's okay to look up to someone or have a role model, but don't think that you need to be exactly like them. You have your own journey that you're going to take at your own speed. Now, no one will ever be an expert in software development. There are just too many things changing, too many new technologies all of the time to keep up with. So realize that you're never going to be an expert, and neither will anyone else. What might help you with this is adopting a growth mindset, which means that you're always going to be learning. Now, if you don't like to learn, software development may not be right for you. Now, in conclusion, realize that a lot of people have these same thoughts and feelings. You are not alone. I struggle with the same things that you do daily. 
I want to encourage everyone to share your own personal experiences with imposter syndrome in the comments below and read others' experiences. I think that it will help you to realize that there are so many of us that are experiencing the same thing. I hope that this video helps someone. But remember that you are good enough. Never stop learning and don't give up.